Hello, it's Steven Nux back with another series to where I'm going to be talking about the various voices of the Sonic the Hedgehog. Shadow the Hedgehog, Jet the Hawk, Amy Rose, Tail, Eggman, Come on down. Roost the Bat, Cream the Rabbit, E123 Omega, all three members of Team Chaos. Okay. Hello everyone, my name is Steven Nux, and welcome to the finale of my Sonic voice actor series. We've been through so many characters, and of course it will be appropriate to end with the one and only Knuckles the Echidna. There were so many requests for this one, and I respect every single one. You guys knew exactly what you wanted, and you tried to let me know in every video, my channel, my inbox. Seems like Knuckles got the spotlight he deserved after all. Now one more time just to clarify, this is the final episode. Episode, so no more requests please seriously I get tired of seeing blaze comments on every episode it's great actually I love you guys too much blaze the cat has two voice actors or actresses Bella Hudson and Laura Bailey and to be honest I think they sound the same big I don't care and if you ask for Metal Sonic really these things aren't the easiest things to make anyways Time to start this finale. Now you all should know my stance on the cartoon voice actors by now, but for this episode, of course I'm including them this time. So with that being said, let's talk about Bill Wise. Remember, this is the very first voice actor for Knuckles, so you can't really expect it to be grand. Well, maybe you can, but we're talking about the Sonic OVA. You get what I'm saying? Now I like to imagine the process for choosing Knuckles' voice was difficult. His attitude was pretty laid back, he's hot tempered, and he's an islander. How do you give this character a voice that the fans will respect and find relatable? Do we make him sound normal? Do we make him rough and edgy? Or do we give him a Jamaican accent? Which, funny enough, was actually considered at one point. The route they took with Knuckles was understandable yeah that's one more job i won't get paid for but i've known you for a while so i'll just put it on your tab and you can pay me back later on finding treasure is my absolute favorite pastime <laughs> honestly while it's nowhere near his best i kind of like it i don't think it fits him but in context of the movie it works you know you got a guy named martin burke as sonic laney fraser as tails Generally, they all have this over-the-top anime dub voice. For this project, yes, I'm fine with it. For anything else, no. Another cartoon Knuckles starred in was Sonic Underground. I'm sure you've all heard of this show. Me, I never really knew what it was until about four years ago. It was then I watched an episode that starred Knuckles. Exciting, right? Well, my thoughts were varied. In this show, Knuckles was voiced by a guy named Brian Drummond. Not Ryan Drummond. Brian Drummond, just to clear confusion. He doesn't appear much, but when he does, I laugh every time. You wolf face, you should have stayed home. Now you get to beat dinner. Goodbye, hedgehogs. I can easily see why you would call this guy terrible, but it's freaking hilarious to me. It's like a joke. I almost want to say that this actor knows he's annoying. I don't know, but... I like this take on Knuckles for a reason. The show was targeted to children. He doesn't have to be hardcore. It was the late 90s. I have little to no problem with Knuckles' voice from Sonic Underground. But overall, I find classic Knuckles' lineup to be a little underwhelming. You want to know how they're going to make this cool character talk. And these two actors are all we got. They sound pretty similar. They both have that wacky cartoon persona you'd expect. But still, just look at them. I mean, Come on. Again, I admittedly like both voices, but not for the same reasons I like his voice in the actual games. You see what I'm saying? Speaking of that, I think it's time to move on to the group that actually matters to me. Yes, that is the 3D actors. Again, I'm categorizing them for a reason. I don't really want to blend my thoughts between two sections. Now, if you thought the Sonic movie had pressure, man, imagine the casting process for Sonic Adventure. Sonic's first big 3D game. We're gonna have cutscenes, voice acting, high-speed action. This is the evolution of the series. And yes, it was. This is where I believe actual thought process played into the casting of Knuckles. Since this isn't the classic era anymore, how are they going to portray him? Because they could have easily just changed his character altogether, but they didn't. His roots were there. The man to take care of this was Michael McGarn. Sonic Adventure had a lot of cutscenes, a lot of deep moments. The game was really emotional. Knuckles was a main focus of that game. When voicing him, you have that chance to capitalize. McGarn did that exceptionally well. Wait a minute, I remember the broken pieces of the Master Emerald. I have to restore them to where they belong. I guess he didn't get enough the first time. What's going on here anyway? 
There are times where I really wanted him to say a particular thing better, in fact there were plenty of times, but in Sonic Adventure, no actor really stood out for me, so Knuckles was really just another character in the game. I understand that they probably weren't looking for stellar performances while directing Sonic Adventure, you know, gameplay is what matters, but I just wish McGarn did more. You can sense that he wanted to, but I feel as if he was told to tone his performance down, which is really sad actually, but as for the voice, I have no problem with. McGarn's Knuckles has always been one of my favorites, if only for his innocence. Now you can blame the writing, but he sounds mature enough to be taken serious. I especially love his ending cutscene in the game. You really get to clearly hear his performance. I may not know the whole story behind this, but perhaps it's better that way. I'm at peace once more. Again, he sounds a little static, but at that time, this was a great choice for Knuckles. When he yells at Sonic, his voice gives you that sense that they're still allies. Nigarn never overdoes his lines. He's not yelling or anything like that, he's very straightforward. Honestly, I think he's the most safe actor for Knuckles, because he doesn't do anything wrong, but he's not spectacular at acting either. I personally blame this on the fact that he's only in Sonic Adventure. Look at Jennifer Dullard and Ryan Drummond. They improved in Adventure 2 and Heroes. If Nigarn stayed with Knuckles, I almost guarantee he would have been just as great. However, with that being said, I'm glad he didn't stay. And I only say that because if he did, I would have never had as much of a connection as I do now with Knuckles. Let me explain. Oh, and before I continue on, Ryan Drummond, also the voice of Sonic at the time, actually voiced Knuckles in Sonic Shuffle, and you don't care. He's okay, but seriously guys, I'm not counting this. Because McGarn left after Sonic Adventure, yes, they let go of Knuckles' first voice right away for some reason, a new actor had to take his place. Now this should have been easy, in Adventure 1, they established the character, and all they had to do was expand it. Well, I like to imagine it was too easy. The actor that took his place goes by the name of Scott Dreer. Going from Adventure 1 to Adventure 2, you shouldn't really expect too much of a change. I mean, everyone literally sounds the same. But for Knuckles, well, he doesn't sound the same. I saw Eggman go inside the pyramid. And more importantly, I saw that Batgirl go inside with him as well. Well, you saw them too, right? What? Why do I have to find the key? I just want to take a moment to look at Knuckles' design. Hey guys, long time no see. Yeah, we'll see about that. You got that? That makes it very powerful. Yep. That's about right. Scott freaking Dreer. I don't know what happened, but they managed to find a really good voice for Knuckles. Yes, I sense that this character is friendly and reliable. I sense that he has his anger moments. I sense that he's up for challenge. Dreer does this smooth. There isn't one moment I say to myself, oh, that was just out of place. When I look at the design of Knuckles, when I see him in the classic games, I expect him to sound cool. The whole concept of him is cool. It was cool to glide in midair. It was cool to have long hair. With his voice like this, it it's very hard to dislike the character. Dreer truly brought Knuckles into 3D, hands down. When he shows fear, he sounds expressive and reserved without being boring. With Knuckles' tone of voice, I feel as if he would listen to his own theme song. Everything about Scott Dreer's Knuckles is perfect to me. He's aged appropriately with the other characters, he communicates with them well. When he argues, he's not over the top screaming everywhere. The personality Dreer gives Knuckles is really suiting and really made him a credible character. I respect Scott Dreer for making Knuckles the character I imagine him to be. Now, so far, we've seen the lineup get better and better. Well, for me. Now, how do you continue it? Well, sadly, along with several other cast members, Scott Dreer got released with obviously no efforts to come back. So now we turn to someone named Dan Green. This was a 4 kids actor, you know, Sonic X. So when I heard him on the show, I didn't care for it. After all, Sonic X isn't canon. These actors weren't going to be in the game, so no worries. Well, Shadow the Hedgehog proved me wrong. Knuckles appeared in the game with Dan Green as his voice actor. And I was very, very mixed. Hey, it's Shadow. Good timing. What is this? Eggman swore to me that all he wanted was to live in peace. Let me take care of Eggman. Coming from Heroes, I didn't know what happened to Knuckles' character. See, I then realized that, okay, I now like Knuckles for a completely different reason. I thought he was butchered, I thought he sounded way too old, and now, I'm pretty much the same. Why? Oh. Why was this change necessary? At this point in time, we established Knuckles as a 16 year old kid that was really cool with his peers, reserved, and adventurous. So what happened? Now please, let me finish before you Dan Green fans start ripping me apart. Dan Green sounds like he's acting for another character. At that point in time, there was nothing that screamed Knuckles the Echidna to me when he spoke. He doesn't sound like he listens to rap music. Just close your eyes while listening to him speak. I see some huge, strong, idiot character. 
kind of like Storm, to a different degree, of course. I can easily see the appeal for Dan Green's Knuckles. I mean, he's tough, edgy, older, careless, doesn't have time for friends. It's all there. And I know a lot of people think this is how Knuckles is supposed to be. And while I definitely don't agree, I can see it. And to be honest, the guy's a really good actor. I never have problems with Green's delivery. He's to the point and very focused. My main problem with him, though, is that he's such a downgrade for the character. He's one of the reasons Knuckles is the way he is today, and that bothers me. Why does he have to be this idiot character that always yells? Yes, Knuckles has always been a quote-unquote idiot, but that always seems subliminal. In the Dreamcast era, he never showed that he lacked intelligence. It was always something that his surroundings kind of did for him. With Dan Green, it seems like they aim to make you want to forget that Knuckles was ever credible, and I think that's what some people did. Like Rouge, not a serious mind you, I feel like Dan Green's Knuckles ruined the peak that Dreer was aiming for in the past games. And really, it shouldn't even be this serious, because the guy's a great actor. But when you take my favorite character and alter him as such, yeah, that offends me. A lot of you guys are probably okay with it. Like, calm down, he's still the same Knuckles we all know and love, but to me, he's not. I don't like Dan Green's take on Knuckles because of that. Now, you all should be aware of the current voice cast as of now. So, the guy voicing Knuckles as I speak is Travis Willingham. My opinion? Imagine a sophomore in college trying to imitate Dan Green. I'm serious. Ugh, how long are they gonna make us wait? All this pent-up energy is making me itch. Come on, let's do this thing! Thanks, Sonic. You did a good job back there. Hey, did you gain weight? Okay, all jokes aside, I think the guy's a really great actor, but that's just it. I don't care for this guy at all. I know at this point in time, Knuckles is a joke side character. What can I expect? Do I prefer him over Dan Green? Not really. At least with Dan Green, I feel as if he had a focus. With Willingham, not so much. Again, it seems as if he's trying to impersonate someone. And out of all of the new voice actors, he's the one I've slept on the most, surprisingly. My favorite freaking character. And it's really disappointing too. I find out that the Sonic series is in a new voice cast, and all I can think of is the replacement of Dan Green. What do I get? Dan Green. Now, it's pretty obvious that the new Knuckles is aiming towards a different audience, but hey, the guy's a great actor. To wrap this up, let's take a quick rundown of all the actors. Bill Wise was okay, not much to talk about. Brian Drummond blended well the surroundings and made for good laughs. Michael McGarn did great, gave a nice amount of innocence while keeping the character rough. Dan Green was a change I didn't want and completely changed the character for me. Travis Willingham I find very disappointing and forgettable. But I do respect him for bringing that cool attitude back to Knuckles. Over all of the years and acting that went into voicing Knuckles, I can easily say that Scott Dreer takes the crown. He is Knuckles. Every line he says, how he interacts with Rouge, Amy, Sonic, Tails, how he's so calm. This is the same character that sits on an island all day. He proves that Knuckles is a protagonist with a nice degree of attitude, while Dan Green leaned more on the anti-hero side. The reason Knuckles is my favorite video game character is partly due to Scott Dreer's performance. I found him the most relatable and easiest to listen to as opposed to the others. Now I know a lot of you might disagree with the the things I've been saying towards the newer actors, but it's just that they lack so much of what I loved about the character. Knuckles wasn't a joke in Adventure 1 and 2. He wasn't yelling at Sonic every time they met in Heroes. It was the last time I took Knuckles seriously in the story, and that saddens me to this day. Please, don't try to argue with any comic related ideas, I don't care, I only play the games, and that's really all that matters in these videos. I can only hope for a day that involves Knuckles going back to his old self, but as for now, I still have my favorites. Not only is Scott Dreer my favorite Knuckles, but he's also my favorite Sonic voice actor. The perfect voice for the perfect character. How can you go wrong? But anyways guys, that's the episode. Now I tricked you with the Chaotix video, but this is the actual finale. There will be no more Sonic voice actor videos after this one, so please don't leave character requests. If I missed a character you like, please leave a video response of your opinions on that character. I'd love to take a look at it. So yes, this is the end of the series. I hope you all enjoyed it. It's the most viewed series on my channel. I thank you all for that. The series saw lots of support throughout the months, and I hope to continue attracting that support in my future videos. This has been and one heck of a ride. I'm Steven Knox, and thank you for watching. Oh, and before I go, I'd like to share with you all my idea of the perfect Sonic voice cast. If you've seen every episode, this shouldn't be a surprise to you. So, here we go.
same 